The lights, the cameras, the action. The 2013 NAB show taking over Las Vegas all week long. Here are the best bets, content, ideas, people, plus the tools to make it all happen. It is the world's largest media and entertainment event with nearly 1,600 exhibitors and 90,000 attendees. Welcome to the studio experience sponsored by Intel and welcome to NAB Show Live. I'm your host, Rich DeMuro. Now, all week long, we've been bringing you the highlights from this year's show from hot topic panels, super sessions, and superstars. It is all right here. Now today was yet another exciting day. There was a broadcast mind session featuring my pal Shira Lazar, host of What's Trending, plus Tom Green and Penn Gillette. You didn't think Teller was gonna talk, did you? There was also a technology luncheon, plus a talk with FCC Chair Julius Janikowski and more. Let's take a look. I, I would encourage broadcasters, as you participate in these proceedings, to think about uh, incentive auctions not as a zero-sum game, where any time the mobile industry wins, the broadcasting industry loses. I think uh, this could be the single biggest opportunity in front of us to grow the content economic pie for everyone, benefiting uh, all the businesses that are part of it, and ultimately benefiting uh, American viewers, internet users, mobile users, etc. And that is where I think the gold is on this, in this new frontier, is trying to figure out how you can monetize the content you own, whether it's a live performance, whether it's a, you know, a YouTube star putting together their channel. I think that the interesting piece here is that ownership is gonna drive everything. There isn't any breakdown at all anymore. There is no difference anymore between anything. I mean, books, and radio and movies and TV have all bled together. The only thing we're having trouble with is, uh, is finding a way to make money. Our industry needs to evolve like any other industry and that's what we were gonna do. Irrelevant of what happens uh, in that process, we will still evolve and we will still innovate and we still have that need to be able to progress like any other industry. What we're talking about is one signal, one pipe, and uh, devices are picking up you know, that same signal and picking off pieces of that signal and utilizing them as, as they would any other television signal. The exciting part about really being able to go to tablets is that all of a sudden you're not constrained by just thinking about ad insertion in terms of regional DMA or zip code targeting. Uh, household uh, addressable uh, you know, advertising is now becoming growing pretty quickly. Um, I think of that as a big opportunity and a lot of you know, operators in our space, uh, along with the ad sales, are moving in that direction. Today, you know, it's some dude I went to high school with who you know, found an interesting video on YouTube that suggested on Facebook that his 812 friends watch it. There's nothing stopping from every single content supplier, studios, broadcasters, etc., from doing exactly the same thing themselves. What Netflix did is what your book says. They've basically been a digital disruptor that harnessed the platform in order to create this new value proposition focusing on the end-to-end -end experience. Yo, my name is John, and I'm at the NAB. It's exciting for me, and just a little creepy. You see, I'm not a PD, a GM, or CFO, but I love old school radio. John Tesh definitely surprised me the most with his rap rendition. He was so inspiring and told some really great stories up there on stage. All right, all week long, we've been bringing you a series on the evolution of the NAB show. They say content is king, and it seems like that is more important now than ever before. Everyone has the tools to create content, but that doesn't necessarily mean it's worth your time. Today, field correspondent Stacy Cohan takes a look at content and its role at the NAB show. And for the final installment of my evolution series, we are talking about content. Not only the content that's being created and conceived by everyone here in attendance, but also the content provided by the NAB as this business continues to evolve. Broadcasting is an indispensable technology, particularly as to video. It's, a, it's one to many architecture, free and local. It's priceless and is, is a very central part 
of the, the, the life of what it means to be an American citizen, to be well informed, to be entertained, and to be protected with emergency information. And the NAB show sort of brings all of that together. NAB has shifted, has tried to concentrate its programming um, to satisfy the, the needs of content creators, uh, specifically uh, below the line crew um, who need to um, learn how to use the tools that are on the NAB show floor properly um, and would like to hear about how other filmmakers um, have maximized those tools. But the sessions when I get a chance to, uh, that's something that has really been enriched tremendously over the last few years by NAB and they're extremely valuable. I've been lucky enough to moderate a few of them. I don't always have the time to go to them, but, but they're very valuable. When, when I first started going to the show, there, there was one or two tracks maybe of educational material. Now there's probably a dozen, and the scope of those tracks is remarkable as well. Um, there is really no place else that I'm aware of where one can come uh, and get the kind of, of updating uh, educational uh, information. And, and, and just general, give, give one the ability to keep up with what's going on, the state of the art, or where things are going, other than the NAB show. And that's why it's tremendously valuable to be here every year. So now you've seen what the NAB has to offer. Let's take a look at the content the folks right here on the floor are creating. So there's different kinds of notions of content, but it's actual creative content. How you, how you acquire that from a news perspective, um, remote production, remote capture, and then you have to edit that sometimes right on the site, sometimes you backhaul it to a central facility and do post-production there. It's also beyond just news uh, from the broadcast kind of perspective and other kinds of content like scripted content, uh, films, uh, advertising content, commercials, so really anything that uses uh, the digital video platform from cinema to 30 second spots, uh, it's, it's here. Well, you know, in the in the more recent years, a lot of the focus of the show, you know, has been around the importance of content and actually the the interchange between an interplay between technology and content. You know, and and they both really are, you know, uh, uh, one end of the spectrum, uh, or, or you know, two ends of the spectrum, and each driving, you know, one another. Uh, so, you know, technology has had huge impacts on the kind of content that we now have available to us uh, as consumers, and vice versa. The the content itself and the stories that are being told and how they're being stole, told are impacting how technology is evolving to adapt to that. User-generated content, the equipment that that's uh, being recorded and captured on, uh, all of those things are new pieces of what the show is. And uh, one of the great things over, over the years, again, is that the show has continued to evolve to reflect those changes, that growth, innovation, and uh, we're able to attract great minds and great folks to be on panels and be speakers so that those attendees really get a lot out of the conference. If you have a nice story to tell, you want to tell it and you find the right people who help you to do so. If these people here who work on this show are with me, it's because I want to speak or I have to speak. But they are part of this content I produce in the moment I speak to them. So we all stick together, behind the camera, in front of the camera, we all produce the content. And I only can speak to you because we are sticking together as a community in the technical area, in the mental area, in the international area, and even, let's say, in the area we still don't know today what's going to be the future. So the NAB show has truly evolved right along with our industry. Throughout this series, we have taken a look at the great 90-year history of the NAB show. We have also looked at the convergence of industries and technologies at this annual event. We have met with the community, all of the people and faces you will see here as they've grown and changed over the years. And finally, taken a close look at the content from attendees to that which the NAB provides. And you can bet the NAB show will continue to evolve as our business grows in the future. At the 2013 NAB Show in Las Vegas, I'm Stacy Cohan. Now this week I've seen some great new technologies on display. There are tools to make your job easier, more efficient, and even help you work in ways you never thought possible. Adobe is showing off a collaborative editing system I know would save me and my, my team 
precious time creating our daily news segments back at KTLA TV in Los Angeles. NAB show is also known for some famous firsts. The first HD TV broadcast happened right here. And this year, you can see the first live 8K broadcast on the show floor. Here's the trending tech generating buzz. I am here at the Adobe booth with Bill Roberts. Hey there, Bill. Tell us some of the exciting announcements you made at NAB show. Well, it's fantastic. We're revealing new versions of all of our products, so that's huge for us. You know, Premiere with tons and tons of new features inside of that, making editors' lives faster, dealing with things like closed captioning, which is a big issue here in North America. After Effects, we've got fabulous integration with C4D, an entirely new 3D workflow that's just people are going nuts over. A fabulous new innovation in terms of things like the, our, our Refine Edge tool, which allows matting to happen with the stroke of a pen. Other things we're doing as well is like the products, you know, continue to go forward, but we're introducing a brand new collaborative architecture here called the Anywhere platform. So what we're not doing is forcing our customers to move their data to the cloud sooner than they want to. So we're taking their existing storage and allowing them to work on premise, but have all of the you know, collaborative features that the cloud can provide. You have to do a combination of making their lives better and helping them be faster, but you also have to give them tools that actually change their creative process. So it's a combination of evolution and revolution. I am here at the NAB Labs Futures Park, where they are showing off some very cool technology, including the first broadcast 8K transmission here in the United States. NHK Japan, the big broadcasting company over there, is showing it off and Hamaguchi is uh, here to tell us about how that's all happening. Uh, tell me about this transmission. We have two 8K cameras. In this demonstration, transmitted video is al already uh, recorded uh, and uh, encoded. Our antenna is using close antennas. Uh, that means uh, uh, horizontal uh, polarized and uh, vertical polarized. Uh, it's called MIMO antennas. That stream is transmit. Uh, over the air and then decode it uh, at this booth in real time and display LCDs. At NEB, we have products for HD, 2K, 4K and beyond. That includes 4K cameras for movies and TV shows, OLED monitors, a new Anycast touchscreen live solution, and HD cameras for ENG, live events, studio work, and more. We have three 4K cameras, the F65, the F55, and the F5. The F65 is in use now shooting movies such as Oblivion and After Earth. Sony is showing our 4K lens delivery room story. That includes 4K cameras that shoot content, 4K in theaters with our projectors, and now 4K TVs in the home. Sony, of course, with the biggest booth here at the NAB show, and joining us now on stage is John Stuttart, Vice President, Strategic Sales at Sony. Thanks so much for making the walk from the booth. Uh, my pleasure. It's now great there, to be here. There's so much great stuff on display at your Sony booth this year. You almost need the whole day to get through it all. Let's talk about what is next for television. Uh, it has to be 4K. Over the last few years, uh, we've seen the film industry in the theater industry move from 35 millimeter to 4K. And a lot of the consumers are getting used to that beautiful quality. Now that technology is moving to the small screen. What advantage does 4K have for the consumer? I mean, production-wise, it seems to have a lot. What does it have for the consumer? Oh my goodness, when you look at it, you're just stunned by the quality, especially after looking at high def. You're, first, you're quadrupling the quality, and that's just the resolution, but it, it doesn't stop there. You have to look at the dynamic range. If you look at a sporting event like soccer and you pull away from the screen, now you can see as much detail in the background as you do in the foreground. So you can see the play develop as if you're there. Um, I think for entertainment it's clear. Uh, everyone has seen that moving video. You can just see all that extra that you haven't seen before. In fact, uh, while I was at CES, they put up a, a still picture that was uh, shot on an alpha camera. And I had to go back to it four or five times because each time I went back, I saw some details in the background that I had missed before, as if I was revisiting a piece of art. We're going to see the same thing with TV and uh, drama and uh, full feature releases. And I love how close you can get to it. I remember as a kid, my parents said, don't sit too close to the TV. And now, of course, you can get right up there. Exactly. And, and the old rules are gone. It's totally gone. Uh, when do you think consumers are going to embrace 4K? Because many of us, uh, you know, in the past five, six years just bought an HD TV. 
Uh, and it's a great point, and it's going to take a little while to roll out, and we could debate the timeline, but it is inevitable. And uh, Sony took a big stride forward this week by announcing the price of the 65-inch, and I think it stunned a lot of people because we came in at $6,999, and for the 55-inch, we came in at $4,999. So considering the 84-inch we yeah. had come out with... Uh, I don't know, about, let's say within the last six months, was $25,000. So this is a huge breakthrough. So that's the beginning. And it's uh, not too far off from a high-end HD TV. Exactly so right. So a little bit more, you get that 4K. And it comes with unbelievable audio as well. The speakers are just something to behold. Okay, so what are we going to be able to watch in 4K first off? Who do you think is going to be first out of the gate to sort of produce this content? Well, we'll start with the, uh, the pictures made for cinema release. Um, so with the server that came with our 84-inch, and we have a new 4K server that we're going to release uh, for consumers that'll be out early this summer, that'll come with content. 4K movies will be preloaded, and you'll be able to then download uh, 4K movies onto the server. Uh, but soon right after that, it's going to be, I believe, television. This year, uh, some of the pilots, as well as the TV shows, are being mastered on 4K. And even if it's not released on 4K, let's say 2K, the masters are going to start building up the library. So as the consumers catch up, once those TV shows go into syndication, they'll be ready in 4K. Wow, that's amazing. Uh, tell me about Sony's involvement with 4K. What, you talked about some of your TVs. You have the professional <laughs> equipment as well. Tell me all the things you're doing. Uh, we like to say from the lens to the living room. Uh, so we'll start with the, uh, Tom just had mentioned, the F5 and F55. Uh, we released that camera about two, about two months ago. We've already sold 2,000 units in a very short period of time. Uh, we're in backwater situation for it. And that camera is so popular because it could be used for cinema releases. Uh, as Tom mentioned, it'll be used on After Earth. And we just had Oblivion be released uh, uh, using the F65. And uh, as you go down to being used for TV shows, so mastering, like I said, in 4K, we're releasing uh, 1080i, 1080-60p, 720p, so television shows. But also sporting events now are using our 4K camera. So what they're doing is they're doing cut out and zoom is what we call it. So on tight plays where you can't get that resolution, uh, they'll go into a 4K, so you have the big palette. They'll cut into where the action was or the close play was, blow, zoom in on that. Now you have the, all the quality of the 4K, so you can really see in unbelievable detail whether the person was inbounds or out of bounds. So even though the consumer doesn't know it, they've already been seeing 4K on TV. Yeah, I was talking about that with my uh, news director last night. We were saying how beneficial that is in the news industry. Because normally when you, you zoom in on something, you take that normal HD video, you get in and it's kind of blurry when you get up close to yes. see those details. Nowadays, we're going to be able to just zoom right in. It's going to look crystal clear. I'm sure all the talent will love that. Huh? I'm sure we <laughs> will love that as well. Um, and tell me about uh, home. So, I mean, cable companies are going to have to embrace this as well to get that delivery down the line. How long do you think before that happens? Well, we already know that uh, some of the streaming companies, I won't get into the names, but they've already released saying that they're embracing 4K and they're going to be streaming to the home uh, within a year. That sets the bar. So I think others will be uh, in a position to do the same thing. So whether it's video on demand or streaming or what have you, I think um, what we'd like to see is on an arms race. Let's everyone get into it and get the consumer what they want takes a lot of bandwidth for sure. Um, John, tell me what's been the buzz at your booth? What's the number one question people are asking you about this technology? Uh, at first, I think they're just amazed by the quality. And so it, 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 they asked the qu same question you asked. Well, when can I get it? <laughs> I want this so, now. It, exactly right. So the next thing for the professionals, what they want to know is about the ecosystem. Can they shoot it? Can they edit it? They can release it. So the great news for us, when we released the uh, 55 camera, so the F5 and the F55 camera, we already had 31 partners lined up uh, that we work co cooperatively with so that we can uh, fill in the workflow issues that you may think would exist, but they don't. So now we, with uh, very little added costs, you can do 4K instead of high def. And I think future-proofing is wonderful. And we're seeing some video of your uh, beautiful Sony booth here. Yeah. This is uh, the biggest booth on the show floor. Is there something that you can't miss besides all the stuff that we already talked about? It just seems like you need a day to get through it all. <laughs> There's a few things I would point to. Uh, our media backbone products, uh, I think, is transformative for the industry. Uh, what it allows is to bring workflow automation uh, to a network or to anyone that deals with a lot of media files. Uh, Next, we, like a lot of other folks, uh, introduced a cloud service. I guess what's different with us, we came with a 
full array of production tools. And the feedback we're getting from multimedia companies is phenomenal. So we think that's big. And lastly, we introduced a technology, which was the 4K OLED. And <laughs> you, you can see it from halfway across the other booth. And it's just like a gravitational pull. People just are sucked in. Uh, the dynamic range on that uh, Monitor is just terrific. So it's 56 inch OLED, it's 4K, unbelievable. I've never been so enthralled with the video you were showing there of that parade. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, it was just amazing, the colors. Uh, yeah, the John, content's pretty good, huh? Yeah, the content is pretty good. John Studdart, uh, Vice President, Strategic Sales at Sony. Thanks so much for coming up here and joining us today. Where can they find the Sony booth? Uh, good you can't miss it, you can't miss it, <laughs> come on, hall. you just go to the central hall, you go to the end, it's right there, thanks so much. Uh, now let's talk about this next technology, this has really changed the way that we cover breaking news and live events, it's called Live View, and it lets you go live in HD on TV using cellular connections. Now the technology has been used in the presidential election, the Olympics, Hurricane Sandy, and many more events. It really is one of the biggest advances in news, news gathering I've seen in my career. Will Richmond of Video News caught up with Live View on the NAB show floor to talk about their technology and also tell us what's new. Will Richmond with Video News, and I'm here at the NAB Show 2013 with Ken Zamko, who's uh, from Live View. Hey, Ken. Hey, Will. How's it going? Live View is one of my favorite companies in the industry, and you guys are actually have announced a couple of new products here, um, which you're going to tell us about, and you're also going to show us. Live View is known as a company that does bonding. We know how to take a number of data connections, primarily cellular connections, and turn them into a, a consistent, high-quality pipe. So we created the Live View Smart Grip. This example, my phone happens to be AT&T, and my, the MiFi that I have in here is Verizon. So now, again, I have two carriers, double the bandwidth, uh, uh, much better resiliency. It's a very easy way to, uh, to just hold a device and uh, kind of point and shoot. And the applications we see for that, so in general, our iPhone application uh, is now in use by a lot of uh, stations and broadcasters that want all their employees to have something in case they happen to be in a breaking news uh, event or location. Last year, we announced our partner partnership with Panasonic. Now this is uh, fully deployed, so the uh, new Panasonic uh, 600 can support Live View. So you can control the, uh, the Live View unit from the camera. We also this morning announced our uh, partnership with uh, Sony as well. Quite a few things. All right, well great, congrats on all that. And next year maybe we'll uh, live stream this interview using the, um, the iPhone app. Yeah, happily. Uh, just let us know. Ah, the brave new world of backpack journalism, a new twist on the one-man band, but with the ability to accomplish so much more. I have a feeling in the future when you start as a TV reporter, you're going to get your keys to the office and now one of those little live U units for your iPhone. Now let's turn our attention to the booths. Some are big, some are small, all of them are very unique. The ACE Awards, which stands for Awesome Cool Exhibits, honors the best booths on the show floor. The second annual ACE Awards were handed out at a ceremony held in the beer garden. The NAB's Chris Brown was master of ceremonies, along with a few showgirls in true Vegas spirit. Booths were judged on creativity, effectiveness, overall structure, and peer review. In the 100 to 400 square foot space, Media Silo took home the honors for the best linear booth. They make working with video easy. SciSys was awarded best small booth. At NAB Show, they are featuring their latest solutions for radio, archive, music scheduling, and the newsroom. Rydell got Best Medium Booth, the real-time video, audio, data, and communications network provider, showed off how it powered the Red Bull Stratos event. Finally, VizRT took home Best Large Booth. VizRT provides real-time 3D graphics and asset management tools for the broadcast industry. Now joining me is a guy who's been having lots of fun on the show floor, Ryan Salazar of Creative Cal. Thanks for being up here. Hey, Rich. How you doing? So uh, you've had a lot of fun. We've seen your little yeah. pieces here. What has been the vibe on the show floor for you? Um, I'm hearing a whole lot about 4K, uh, and, and now we're hearing about 8K. It's crazy. It's just uh, pretty cool. Uh, but the show has been spectacular. It's all about mobile streaming, the cloud. 
Uh, it's amazing. Do you feel you're an audio guy? So do you feel like yeah. a kid in a candy store when you see all these patches and plugs? Oh and yeah, SSL and, and all these other audio companies. They have some amazing displays. You make your wish list when you leave here. Oh, it's yeah. like this is yes. the stuff I want to buy in the next Definitely. year. So start saving up. Um, so I know you've got a little uh, top five list. You know, Letterman has his top ten list, but Ryan has his top five list of the cool stuff he saw on the show floor. Ryan Salazar here from Creative Cow with my top five NAB picks. Let's get started. Well, the Enduro Hi-Hat basically is, uh, it comes in two flavors. We've got a 100 millimeter version, we've got a 75 millimeter version. This guy takes 250 pounds, that guy takes 165. Um, really, we kind of looked at your traditional cast iron, but it's fixed and it's not versatile. You get a situation like this where you're kind of on stairs, you're on steps, and you need that stability, and you'll want to be able to level out, but you can't do that with your standard rock down board. You've got to do it with the tripod here. Wow. Thanks so much, Victor. Yeah, it's a pleasure, Ryan. Thanks. Here I am again with another top five pick. We've got Matthew from Pelican. Tell us about your new case. Sure, no problem. Pelican products here at NAB 2013, unveiling brand new products for part of our backpack line. The U160 product's gonna offer a hard case in the bottom with modular padded dividers and extra lid organizers in the top. The inside is completely customizable and 100% waterproof. Excellent, you have another case as well here? Yeah, the S115 offers all the great stuff we had from our previous line with a laptop case in the back. Again, waterproof, crush proof. But then in the front, we offer a fully customizable uh, padded system as well as the case for lenses. Very cool. Thank you so much, man. Great. Thank you, guys. Ryan here for Creative Cow. This is one of my top five picks. The GoPro. Tell me about the new product. All right, we've got the GoPro Hero 3 Black Edition here. This camera, despite its size, shoots beyond HD resolution, beyond HD frame rates to meet all your production needs at the highest possible quality so it can intercut with all your other cameras in your, in your wow. shoot. You can shoot up to 120 frames a second in 720p and can shoot 2.7K, which is double the pixel count of HD at 24, 25 and 30 frames a second. Shoot 1080p 60. There are so many resolution modes that will match your production needs. Excellent. Thanks a lot, David. Thank you. Here's another top five pick for uh, Creative Cow and NAB Show Live. We've got Jason Levine. How you doing, Jason? Good, man. Good to see you. Tell us about the Creative Cloud. Yeah, so the Creative Cloud is really exciting. It's, you know, it's, it's a new way to access all the amazing applications that you know and love from Adobe. Everything from Premiere, After Effects, Photoshop, Illustrator. It all lives in one place, but it's not just applications. It's tools and services, the ability to share your creative portfolios with things like Behance, store your files, share your files, have people comment and see inside of layers and Photoshop files. And it's just, it's a, it's, a, it's a wonderful way to experience what you know and love, but experience it with others in your creative community. Thanks so much. Thank you. And my top five pick is uh, Blackmagic Design's 4K camera. Tell us about it, Dan May. So we got this wonderful new Blackmagic production camera 4K. It does uh, essentially a 4K on a 35 millimeter sensor with a nice EF lens. It looks really similar to our uh, currently shipping Blackmagic cinema camera, but again, that big 4K image, that big uh, sensor size in there, a lot of people excited about that. But then we also have this great camera here, which is our pocket cinema camera, which people have been blown away by. Small format, small form factor, 16 millimeter size sensor, Sensor, active micro four thirds, uh, records the small SD cards, and pretty much everyone who's come through is like, I love your 4K camera, but everyone has to own this camera. Literally, yes, a thousand dollars for this camera, Amazing. three thousand for the cinema camera, and four thousand dollars for our 4K cinema camera. So, how the heck do you get the pricing? So. Well, <laughs> we have our tricks, I suppose, out there. I think it's it's magic, black magic.
Ryan, I want to know what you were doing to that show floor out there <laughs> on the ground, that little worm move. Uh, Black Magic, obviously a very, um, people wanted to see that camera out here, that 4K and also the, the pocket cinema camera. Oh, yeah. Uh, GoPro, also another very big success story here at the show. Um, do you think that a, a being on the show floor can really kind of elevate a brand's name? Oh, yeah, definitely. I mean, GoPro, most of us have heard of GoPro over the past few years, and they've been around for, for longer than that. I think a show like NAB uh, will definitely prop up a company uh, with as many attendees as we have here. Yeah, because when I need a, a piece of equipment, you can go online and search for it. But when I'm here, I'm bumping into like 10, 15 things. I'm like, oh, I want that. Random I companies, need that. Sure. That's great. Mm -hmm. From the big to the small. Yep, it's amazing. All right. Well, thanks so much for your contributions Thank to you. our show this week. Now let's see uh, what's happening at tomorrow's NAB show. It's going to wrap up tomorrow. Exhibit hall hours are 9 a.m. to 2 p.m. Have you had enough of Las Vegas just yet? You still got one more general session tomorrow morning at 10 a.m. It's called the App Advantage, leveraging connected devices to deepen engagement. And uh, you also have some discounted merchandise in the NAB show stores. I was there this morning checking out some of the awesome books. They have so much stuff there, more than I imagined. Uh, those are in the central and south lobbies. And finally, save the date. 2014 NAB show happens April 5th through 10th. Wow, get your reservation in now. All right, that's going to do it for our daily live coverage of the 2013 NAB show. Thanks to the studio experience sponsored by Intel for our studio here. I'm Rich DeMiro signing off for the 2013 NAB show. Good night. Mm -hmm.